basically I'm going on to the packages and plotting notebook. So that note, that is notebook number five. So you can follow along from there. And of course, yeah, it, it is good to basically type everything I type as well. Okay, but yeah, so um, Julia has a, a huge ecosystem of different useful packages. Um, this number of 4,000, over 4,000 registered packages is uh, probably very old and it's probably more than double of that hmm. by now. But even beyond that, um, it has packages called PyCall, for example, to call um, import and call any Python function, any Python package, and R call to call any R package or any R function. So um, if something is missing that you want to use in Julia, you can always use Python or R functions. It has, it can essentially natively call C functions. So if something is in a C library or, um, well, I mean, it, C libraries are object files. So if it's compiled from Fortran, C++, C, um, you can call it directly. Now that I think about it, actually, C++, you would need to know the mango name of the function. So that's a lot more complicated. But in principle, you can do it. Um, right. So let's actually show this. So you can check out the Julia registries, uh, which is a GitHub page to see the available packages. Um, so this is a huge list. This is kind of the official registry of Julia packages. Um, it also has instructions for how to register your own package. Then there's the Julia observer. Um, let's see if it loads. It also has a list of packages and you can search from the website. Example is a an existing package. Okay, I, I guess the search will take a little while. Um, I should also have a note in here, uh, Julia Hub. Yes, since um, I'm going into it at this point. Oh no. Okay, well, it's not that hard to find. Um, Julia Hub. So Julia Hub is probably the an easier or a, a better, um, more efficient way of searching for packages. It has some um, some other uses as well. So they offer some services for running Julia in the cloud, for example. So yeah, Julia Lang example is the package I was looking for. You can find a link to the documentation, uh, the repository it tells you what the license is and who's working on it. So yeah, the documentation for uh, the example package is quite short. It has two functions, hello and do math. And do math um, adds five to a number. Hello is essentially the hello world. Uh, well, it um, takes in a name and says hello to that name, which we already wrote. We already wrote that function basically. So, Let's install the example package. I'm um, just to recap. So to install a package, you run using package using PKG. And then PKG contains the package uh, the function add, so package.add example. This will install the example package. No output yet. All right, there we go. So 
no changes. So I guess it was already installed. Um, so it will probably print a little bit more stuff for you. Okay, then to use a package, the standard thing is to use the using keyword, which will pull some functions from the package into the main namespace. And now, so you saw that the example package contained a um, function called hello. So the hello is in fact now in the main namespace and we need to give it a name to say hello to. And it prints hello, Julia. Okay. Um, another way of using a package, this is more familiar to Python users, is to use the import keyword. Now, the import keyword doesn't introduce any functions or any new names to the main namespace. So if we didn't run using example, but just run um, import example, then the hello function wouldn't be available. Actually, maybe it's just best to demonstrate that, but which, since we already did um, using example, we need to get rid of it by restarting. So now if you run import example, kernel starting, please wait. There we go. Um, hello is not defined. There is no function called hello. Right. But there is a function called example.hello. So this is very familiar if you're using Python. Um, and the first option is maybe more familiar if you're using R. And you can use it. It's up to you really which one you use. Um, if you use the Python type, the Python type like I'm, I'm, I am, um, you might expect that there's a lot of name collisions when a lot of packages import something, I mean, export something uh, with the same name. So two packages have the function hello and um, then, well, which one is, well, how do you make, uh, how does it decide which function to run? Well, um, that's what uh, multiple dispatches for. So as long as they don't have the same input types, Julia will always know which function to run. Now, import can still be very useful for, um, for, well, for many things. One is you can do a limited import. So you can do import example dot hello. And you can do aliasing. So this will, if you run this, it will import, it will just take example dot hello and now that will be available. And it will be available with the name example dot hello. Now we already had that, so that's not much of a demonstration. Um, but you can give it a new name. So you can import something as hello to. If you're afraid of, a, or if there is a namespace collision, this will get rid of that namespace problem. Like this. So now there's a function called hello too. You can also import the in entire example package as let's say E to give it a quick shortcut. And now we have e.hello. like this. Okay, so yeah, that's the import keyword. It's um, also useful even if you're mostly just using the using keyword. Okay, oh, I actually found the link to Julia Hub. Um, well, fine, I already showed it to you. Um, but there is also a notebook called 09 Ecosystems, Ecosystem. And this notebook has a list of a bunch of packages, um, some generally useful, and then for different fields. So this may be what you are looking for, or maybe what is useful in your field. Here is also, um, here in the notebook, there's also a link to the Julia Hub. Um, but yeah, writing just Julia Hub into Google or writing, um, or any search engine or writing Julia registry 
into any search engine will give you um, the right answer generally. Okay, so we've already been installing packages, but it is good to have some, um, do some yourself. Actually, yeah, I will show a quick example of another thing and then we will do exercise number one, two and three at the same time in one go. So um, because this is also a question that has been asked a couple of times. Um, so um, Julia provides a very, very good interoperability interoperability with other languages. So even though it is trying to solve the two language problem, um, it doesn't, it is newer than some other languages, of course. So um, those other languages may have some packages that you just want to call directly from them. Now, the first, um, first I will demonstrate how to do this with Python. If you don't have Python ex uh, installed, then um, this will not work or it may not work um, but if you if you are using python then you will have it installed and this will work so i mean if you don't use python then you don't need to care and then you can also skip the python exercise so there is a package.py call um, so what i'm writing here is to add the package by call let's run that oops that is the wrong name so I'll have to wait for it to finish. This is actually not trusted right now. It's probably good to rust, trust it. Okay. And that will also restart this and I can run. So install the package called PyCall with a capital C. Okay, no changes. Using PyCall. So PyCall is for calling Python packages. Um, so once you have write, written using PyCall, you can run, um, well, you can import Python libraries using the py import um, macro. So it starts with an at. Um, let's do scipy.optimize and we'll call it so, so for scipy optimize. Um, scipy optimize contains the Newton solver. Um, we'll need to give it a function, so we'll use an anonymous function. Um, let's just take cosine of x minus x. Um, so that one has a clear minimum. Oh, sorry, a clear maximum. Is that true? It doesn't really have either. Now does it? No. Okay, we'll see what it does. Um, you can ask Julia. You can plot the function. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, we well, we didn't use the plot library yet. <laughs> That's uh, coming very quickly. Okay. Well, it did find what it thinks is a minimum. Um, I guess it's between some range. One is, I guess, the starting point for the Newton iteration. Um, right. Right. Of course, this is a Newton solver, so it will just converge at some, probably a minimum. Okay, um, next let's call a C library. So for that, we don't need to install anything. Um, this is native, it's a function called C call. I keep saying C, but Fortran, Fortran libraries are exactly the same. Um, so any, any object files, any libraries you can call in this way. This is in the standard libraries. Um, so, okay, we're com I'm calling the clock function and you do need to colon here. Um, so I'm calling the clock function here. Um, it returns an integer, so we'll convert it to a Julia int32 type integer. And it doesn't have any parameters, so we'll just have an empty tuple here, um, which means no parameters. Okay, and it returns the time. Now, this syntax is maybe not the most clear, so let's call a function that takes some parameters. Um, print f. 
and it also in fact returns an int32 because it's a c function it returns one or zero depending on whether it was successful um, but it takes an input parameter and the input parameter is a string so there is a type c string in um, in julia or i mean well i guess it's a type c string um, it goes i mean it, it turns a string from Julia into a string that a, the C function can accept. And we'll print hello. Um, I guess we'll need a comma here. So this string is now the input parameter for the printf function. Okay, so it prints hello as we expect. Um, it returns six. I'm not sure what the printf return values mean, but oh, that's what it returns. Now, one more quick demonstration of this, um, because mostly you would want, you don't want to call the standard C library functions. They are already there in Julia. What you want to do is call functions you have written yourself that are in some library in your system. So I'm going to call printf again, but I'm going to specify what library to call it from. And that is libc.so.6. And again, it returns in 32. It takes a string and that string is hello. So it will now look for this library in the LD library path to um, so the linker library path. And it will run, find this symbol from it and run it if it's a function or try to run it as a function. Okay, and that works. Now, this is just on my system. I'm, as you know, these uh, names can be different on different systems. Um, so, so yeah, you will need, uh, you will basically need to compile your code, your C code into a library and know the name of, um, of the library. If you're on Ubuntu, this will probably work as I've written it. Okay, um, so there are some other, there's R call, which I already mentioned. There's CXX wrap, that's nice because, yeah, like I said, there's the, the mangled names problem in C++. So yeah, you can call C++ um, functions. And then there's, well, you can also call MATLAB, Java, Mathematica even, Objective-C, anything, um, basically. So if you're interested in one of those languages, um, follow the links to see how it works. Yeah, but it was the small uh, thing about this uh, full interoperability in Julia, that uh, in Julia there's also, well, it's more advanced, but there's this package called binary builder, which uh, you can actually use to compile a third party like uh, libraries uh, into executables that Julia understands. Uh, so that if you have like a okay. software open source, which is written, for example, in uh, C, or in C++, then you can uh, use this binary builder to compile it uh, into a binary executable that Julia can understand and reads, and so can add uh, this binary dependency to your Julia software. So if uh, someone has been developing a C++ software since the 50s, you don't have to catch up with the 70 years of work. You can just compile that. Well, not just. It's sometimes a little tricky, but you can compile that uh, C++ or C library into a binary that Julia understands at that binary dependency and then just write a wrapper for that and build on top of that. Yeah, so it's, okay. I guess a nice addition for the topic. I can add the link to the repository of this package yeah. in the HackMD. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, um, if you add it to the HackMD, um, I mean, of course, it's also good to add it to the repository. Yeah. So that's good to know. Okay, so now we have exercise one. It's all the way up here. Install the package called primes and then try to figure out um, how do you list the first hundred primes. Um, no, list all the primes that are smaller than 100 actually. Okay. And yeah, it, it is giving you a hint that it's there is something called primes. You need to search the help for. And then if you're interested, try calling a C function 
or a Python function. And once you are done with the one exercise you most want to do, uh, put up a green check mark and continue to the others. I did what I did yesterday many times, which is to drag um, a window and stop sharing by mistake. Okay, there we are. Yeah, so that's solved. So, okay, so searching primes. Um, returns a collection of prime numbers from low if specified to high. Okay, I guess that is enough to figure out that. Um, so if you know that syntax, um, it means that you don't have to specify it. You can though, so we can specify anything from zero to 100 and that will give us all the primes between zero and 100. But yeah, just using primes 100 will work. Okay, so for calling Have I left the solutions into these exercises? I am really sorry if I have. Yeah, <laughs> either this is on my notebook only or it's for you as well. It's great. <laughs> well, fine. Um, I mean, the solutions are available anyway, um, but it's not great if you can see them before you even start the exercise. So um, I'm looking here to figure out what to do. Um, so to call cosine, you specify that you want the cosine function with this colon, that's so that it's a name in C, not a name in Julia. Um, it will return a float. Um, I think a float 32 or float 64. So let's say 64. It takes in as a parameter a float 64 and we will have use pi as the input. Okay, and it returns minus one which is exactly what it should. Okay. And um, to run math.cosine, so in Python, we would need to import math. So we'll do that using pi import. So at pi import and we import math. Now, if you just run this, Oh, pi import not defined. Okay, so at some point I have restarted this um, the shell. I don't have pi call anymore. Um, so let's say using pi call. Okay. Oh, because this is a different notebook, right? Pi import math works. So yeah, we could just do that. Math dot cosine pi. Okay, so this is basically the standard um, syntax for Python, but it just happens to coincide with Julia syntax. So once you've done pi import a package, um, it's now um, it's now um, a a name in Julia. It's basically like um, if you had done import package in Julia. So now we can run math.cosine in Python. Okay. Now I should make sure that these get removed. 